so can you talk a bit about your fight with Morales? Um, as I was watching your interviews, I didn't even realize that you took that one on nine days notice. What was kind of like the process there? <laughs> uh, you know, they told me that they were uh, kind of, sh you know, getting, uh, hear my name being put out there, shopping my name out around a little bit and to stay ready. And um, so I was just kind of in this like, gray area this purgatory where i was just training you know not knowing when i was going to fight and they called me up and it was uh michael morales's name on nine days notice so not a lot of time to uh, figure out what you're going to do kind of just got to go in there with the uh what you got and uh you know and i don't know i'm not hope for the best go 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 run what you got and, and give it your all yeah, it was definitely a great show, man, on a nine days notice. Um, obviously, I've been back and watched the fight. And uh, I know him. I know his game a little bit, um, Michael. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that he's entirely all natural um, in there. So, um, yeah, it was a great show, man, hanging in there to the third round, competitive on the feet. Um, so, yeah, that, that was very impressive, man. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, sorry to cut you off. Um, yeah, so a question I like to ask all the fighters is, um, are you the type of guy to, you know, watch tape and exploit someone's weakness, you know, find the path of least resistance? Or are you like, you know, fuck it, I'm going to come with what I've got and uh, you're going to have to deal with that? Uh, you know, I do watch tape. And I figure out what part of my game is going to, you know, basically match up the, the best or put me in the best position. Um, to, uh, you know, just basically put me in the best position possible. You know, I, I do want that upper leg. So I kind I guess you could say I, I kind of do both. I know what I, uh, I'm good. At. Uh, instead of trying to, uh, you know, change at the beginning of camp and adapt and, and do something that I'm not comfortable with, I'm going to figure out what I do that is going to best help me in, in my, in my upcoming fight. So that's kind of how I look at it. It's good to hear, man. I have to ask the question. It sounds it sounds silly, really. Like, why wouldn't you exploit like the weakness of your opponent? But um, in the MMA like Twitter community, you know, where us nerds are uh, doing our thing, um, it's it's so crazy when you watch a fight. You're like, why isn't he taking him down, man? Like, that's your strength. Um, so yeah, it's good to hear, man, that you'd like do your due diligence. Um, and, you, you uh, at this level, right? As you as you uh, get, you know, to the pinnacle of the sport weaknesses and flaws are going to be you know very little to exploit so um you know you got to do all your due diligence even if that 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 flaw is you know oh and after uh you know a separation you know i have like a 50 50 position on the clinch or something my guy tends to move to his right and lower his right hand a little bit you know for a half a second or just a small thing like that you know if yeah. you know, taking advantage of can, can change the fight, you know, even if it doesn't knock somebody out, but maybe you, you score really big there. Yeah. I, um, what would you say your base is in MMA? You know, like your first love, if, if someone asked you like, uh, you know, what do you get excited for in, uh, in practice? Is it, you know, some jujitsu putting the gi on kickboxing? Um, okay. Uh, my first love is wrestling. That's the first, you know, combat sport that I, I found and got into. And I still love it to this day. It's it's definitely the most grueling out of all of them. Um, but uh, I think the one that uh, I'm enjoying most right now is just developing um, some of the boxing stuff. I, I did Muay Thai for a long time. Um, yeah. Always kind of led with my kicks and my feet and, and you know played that outside range and now really kind of diving into the, the the hands more and just trying to figure out how to manipulate that that middle zone and get to clinches get to takedowns um, or keep my space you know so i can take advantage of my kicks yeah that, that's surprising to me that you'd say wrestling because i would have thought like um you was a striker at heart like just from the technical um, aspect of it that I'm seeing from watching the tape, you know, I like, I like you, like uh, your check hook that you throw over the right hand. I like that. You've always got the left cock back ready to go. Um, in, in, in the Kinoshita fight, um, why was it that you didn't throw the left um, primarily? It looked like you was content on throwing the, the right check hook. And I know when you finally did throw the left straight, that's the one that like got his attention. Was right. you just patient there? Was that, was that by design? Definitely, you know, um, 
Yusaka's uh, left hand is deadly, man. Like it, it hits the people and it goes and people go to sleep off of it. So uh, my concern was uh, throwing my left hand and him having such a sniper left hand and him being really fast, you know, youthful that uh, I wasn't going to beat him to that punch. So just, um, just you know, you, I know I have a lot of confidence in my check hook, a lot of confidence in that right hand and the jab as well. So um, knowing that uh, I would just have to pick my spot with that left hand. I didn't want to uh, commit to it too soon and uh, and end up, you know, getting beat to the, the spot, you know, because, um, yeah. you know, it's same side stance, you know, 50-50 stance. You know, you both throw the – the same punch and it's, it basically comes down to, to who gets hit first in those situations. And, you know, he's a, he's a sniper and he's, and he's pretty, and he's really fast. So I just didn't want to get beat out in that sense. I wanted to throw it, throw it on my own terms. And uh, when I, when I knew that it would be beneficial for me. Yeah. And, and it was the perfect timing, man, the perfect storm. I don't, I don't think he was expecting it all. He was like, oh, all this guy's got is like the right check. And then boom. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I hit him with uh, one of those right hands. It was a more of a modified, like, straight. And uh, I know he felt that one. That was the one that finally kind of got me my space. And uh, yeah. so, I, like I said, I know I hit hard with my right hand. It's put plenty of people on the mat, on the deck. And so, uh, you know, it's uh, – you don't want to just be uh, thinking that's all I got either, though. You know, I, I can hit pretty solid with the left hand as well. <laughs> Hey, uh, Renfro can uh, attest to that. It was the right that put him out, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, that, that was amazing, that one. Um, so what else have I got? Yeah, so uh, was, was you a bit bummed out not getting the 50K for that one? Because I'm doing my research and I'm looking at who did get the 50K and they ended up giving it um, the uh, Japanese guy, Tahara, who had an absolute layup. And here's you at what, plus 300 underdog? You know, against all odds, that they're giving you kind of like the up and coming guy who they want to like show off, and you sport the party, man. Was you a bit, you know, bummed out not to get the fifty because it was definitely deserving. I mean, I, definitely. Uh, they keep giving me these uh, contender series guys, and uh, <laughs> you know, I was uh, before I got in the UFC, I was trying to get on the contender series, and you know, um, don't quote me on this, but the consensus kind of was, you know, ah, his age, his age, you know. Yeah. So I'm finding all these contender series guys who show up money is more than my payout money, you know, you know, yeah. so 50 K bonus being the, the huge underdog going against Kenya you know, I, I felt like that was a, uh, you know, well-deserving and to give it to uh, a couple of, you know, to give it to the guys on the, the undercard of this apex thing that are doing the, the Dana White looking for a fight thing. Um, I just, I don't know. Uh, yeah, say, say no more. I'm, I'm with you, man. I was speaking to uh, Victor Ultimarino, who fights on the card this Saturday, and uh, I was talking to him about the bonuses and how they work and, you know, the amount of times I've seen Dana give it to someone on the main card, like a Khabib, who's earning like half a million. And, uh, you know, what's he need an extra 50K for, man? It's just sometimes the UFC's decision making is just baffling to us, uh, to us fans, man. I'm glad that the fans are uh, definitely, you know, the, the the true fans are seeing this stuff. Um, heck, I uh, I still walk around town here, and everybody thinks I got the golden ticket. I'm some kind of millionaire or something, and I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? Go see what my pay was. Yeah, and then the deductions, you know, you've got a camp to pay. You know, um, yeah, people don't understand, man. It's crazy. Hopefully, yeah, uh, Dana opens his eyes, and when you, uh, you know, get an impressive win uh, next week, I mean. You'll get that Okay, man. At this point, it's still the most money I've ever made fighting. Um, and I can't, you know, I can't be too upset about that. So, uh, you know, I'll take what yeah. I can get and, uh, you know, keep trying to climb that ladder and uh, looking for that next contract. Yeah. It's, um, what do you think about uh, Mike Malat? Like you mentioned, like your left hand. I was I was watching a bit of tape and uh, he came out southpaw, which was a bit, um, you know, it wasn't what he usually does what yeah. what you kind of make up of mike stand up if you had to uh, kind of break him down uh you know he's really athletic he likes to you know and he's he finds space to sit down and he throws hard and you know um everyone wants to talk about his first round knockouts and a lot of the times i see in these knockouts is kind of the same thing it's these guys over pursuing him trying to chase him down um and ended up getting, you know, tagged, you know, coming in. And that's where they end up losing because he does throw hard, you know. Um, but that being said, you know, um, 
I watched Mickey Gall touch your touch up his face <laughs> for almost a full round, you know. And then uh, I'm sorry, Mickey Gall is not a striker. So yeah. uh, you know, to to assume, you know for him to assume that his striking is much better than mine and that he hits harder. I mean, I hope that's how you feel. You know, keep doubting me. You know, just yeah. like everybody else has. I'm the ultimate underdog. Uh, I don't think I've been in a fight um, since like 2019 that I was favored. Um, you know, everyone wants to talk about the age or they want to talk about my, you know, kind of goofy style, which I don't think is really goofy. I, um, I, I just I try to stay in my, my good base and, and look to throw when I can and uh, fight at my pace in my space. Um, so, yeah, if he wants to c commit all the sins of overlooking me like a lot of these opponents have, I, I welcome that. Let's, you know, that's going to be your yeah. downfall. I love to hear it, man. Uh, I don't know who's calling your style goofy, but they need to uh, they need to check themselves on that one. Um, yeah, what do you think it is with the bookmakers, man? Like, did you piss someone off over in Vegas? Like every fight, you're like, you know, plus two hundred, plus three hundred. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm thankful, man. I, I'll just keep. I'll, I'll kind of ride that wave of doubt, you know. And yeah. uh, fans that know true fans of the sport can go and. Uh, they can put their money down, and, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to win them some money. That's that's what I'm going to look at it as. So maybe I'll build a fan base off of that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know whether how – you know, I don't know how prevalent you are on Twitter, but um, I think MMA Twitter has uh, definitely got your back, man, because uh, I think you've been a cash cow for plenty of people, man. Um, yeah, I, I love to hear the confidence, man, and, like, how um, how intelligent you are with the breakdowns because you've pretty much said verbatim what I say to, like, my people who ask me like who's going to win that that's kind of what i do is break them down and i was saying the same thing like how can people put so much stock in gal in um sorry in malat when he's getting touched up by gal um the fight before that even renfro was touching him up and it, it was just like these lucky they run on they get overconfident and um yeah you have, you, to, you have to be very you know aware of where his he, he's deadly, you know, where he's good at. And that's, you know, when you give him, uh, when you over pursue and he has his space to sit down and, but that's just anybody, you know, everybody thinks there's some kind of, um, you know, there's some kind of like miracle or there's some kind of like formula for knocking people out. It only takes so much, you know, you, can, you it doesn't, it doesn't take much at all actually to really get knocked out. You get touched in the right spot and anybody will go to sleep and, uh, you know, for Mike, he's just figured out what that range is, you know, and and yeah. as a as somebody that's going to fight him, it's, it you know, the worst thing that I could do is uh, get overconfident or uh, on the other opposite side of that, get in such an anxiety spot where I, I feel like I need to press the fight because that's where he's going to be the, the deadliest is when you're walking into his space. Yeah, that's what they say, right? It's the ones uh, that you don't see that uh, are the most uh, the most potent um what what do you think about going into en enemy like territory does that bother you do, you do you like relish that position obviously you relish being the underdog yeah i mean that, that's another thing that's been you know pretty much going on for since 2019 you know um is i constantly get put against these guys that i'm the underdog against and i'm going in their backyard but you know i've been doing a lot of thinking on this situation um just in the last couple of days, I mean, my my amateur Muay Thai career basically started in Vancouver, BC. So I, I have two fights up there from amateur Muay Thai. So I'm very familiar with the, the Muay Thai community up there. Um, I can't wait to go up there and kind of put myself back in that environment. And secondly, yeah, OK, he's Canadian. Cool. He's not from Vancouver. Um, I'm Pacific Northwest. I'm the hometown guy, you know, yeah. Vancouver should look at it as this guy ran off to California. He's, he, he's looking for sunshine. He's looking for, you know, cute girls in bikinis. Like <laughs> he didn't, he yeah. went up there in the, in the frigid cold and the, in the, the seasonal change, you know, I, I'm here. still. I, I've made my home base in the Pacific Northwest. So, you know, I don't feel like I'm going to any enemy territory. This is my backyard. You know, that just reminded me of uh, Uncle Chow when he was talking about Anderson Silva. He's he's repping Brazil. This guy lives in California in a gated community, uh, you know. Um, but, yeah, you're, you're exactly oh, right. Great. <laughs> I made myself sound like the, the mouth from Westwood. That's not good. <laughs> hey, he's the best to do it, man. That guy's an idol of mine. Um, so, yeah, um, no shame in that. Um, 
Hey, it could even go the other way, you know. Home, he's, he's in his hometown. The pressure's on. You know, friends are asking him for tickets. Um, I've seen it. I've seen it go um, sour for people that way. Definitely, the pressure's on him, man. If he, uh, he he's the hometown kid. He's the Canadian. Um, he's the one they're setting up with. Uh, what everybody everybody's perceiving to be a layup. Um, you know, yeah. you got to come in and, and beat me, pal. I got to <laughs> fight my fight. Yeah. I love it. I I got two more for you. Um, how much do you weigh on the night, man? Because you're you're huge for the weight class, or at least it seems. Um, you know, I gotta credit my strength and conditioning coach and um for helping me. You know, um, I've never been one to really hit weights, and so I've been actually getting more into strength training and and developing that a little bit. So I have gotten bigger. Um, and usually I'll go into fight um the fight night at like one ninety five. Oh damn! Yeah. That's Kina was actually more than me, though, so that's kind of funny that you said that. Oh, really? Yeah. How did you know that? Uh, we always weigh in before we go. We, ah. we... Yeah, silly me, silly me. Um, so, yeah, so we talked about his, his striking. What about uh, the jiu-jitsu? Because, in my opinion, as soon as he starts getting touched a little bit, he's going to look for that uh, body lock, which I don't think he's going to be successful at. But if it does hit the mat, um, you know, what? what's your thoughts about that? I mean... <laughs> Let's say I went from uh, college wrestling in one year, a junior college wrestling program, to doing two years of uh, jujitsu, no gi. I've never stepped in a gi. Um, not that that means anything. Um, I just never did, have done that. I've always done um, grappling, basically, in shorts and a rash guard. So, um, yeah, you know, um, I've been doing jujitsu for as long as I've been doing wrestling, essentially that goes all the way back to like 2008. You know, I guess, I guess I did four years of wrestling before that 2008, you know, I've been doing jujitsu. So, um, I don't know. I, I train with Brent Primus. I train yeah. with Lucas Barbosa. Lucas Barbosa just got second at 80 CCs. Um, he's been a runner up, I believe twice. Brent Primus has been the Bellator champ. Um, I feel very confident in my jujitsu. I feel even off of my back, you know, I do, I do prefer top game. Um, that's no, no secret. If you watch my fights, you know, um, I do prefer top, but, uh, you know, I, I have no problem coming off of my back. Um, I got a lot of submission attempts from there as well, as well as standups and, you know, yeah. um, you get taken down in this sport and it's your job to turn a bad position into a, a positive one or, you know, get back to your feet. So, that's what I'm going to try to do if, if I get taken down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Love to hear it. And yeah, your, your top game, um, that was something that stood out from a, a tape, especially in the Kinoshita fight. He was obviously a, a fish out of water on the ground. Um, didn't really know what he was doing, but yeah, I love the uh, the takedowns and the, the body locks and whatnot. Um, I, I guess, obviously, my opinion don't mean shit. I'm just a guy on the internet, but um, he loves that guillotine, man, on the uh, on the takedowns. Um, yeah. I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, you obviously know you. Thoughts, man, that those are going to be really dangerous. Um, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I got, a, I got a long neck that everybody likes to try to grab. So I'm yeah. I always be aware of it. And, uh, you know, um, it's just the, the nature of the beast. So um, my takedowns, you know, um, have to be perfectly timed. And, you know, otherwise, you know, Mike's got the, the that alpha male, team alpha male guillotine to make you pay. So. Yeah. I love it, man. Uh, I love this fight even more now. I've had the chance to speak to you. Uh, I can't wait to make some money. Um, do, do you do any merch, any T-shirts, anything like that? Have you got anything like that out? Um, I did do a round of T-shirts. I've been getting ha uh, ha um, really uh, bothered about getting an another line of T-shirts out. And so that's something I'll probably be looking into. But uh, as far as merch right now, I don't really have much. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, look for it in the future from me. Uh, you can always go check me out on Instagram. I do have a Twitter, but I'm hardly ever on there. It's, uh, just, I've never been yeah. big into that. Um, and just a shout-out to my whole team, Art of War MMA, Tongsai Muay Thai, um, Pound for Pound Nutrition, Convergence uh, Physical Therapy. Um, and a shout-out to my girlfriend who's, you know, <laughs> been uh, in my corner, my rock for the whole camp, you know, putting up with my uh, – my uh, pessimistic mindset. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Um, yeah, well, thanks for the interview. And uh, yeah, get on that merch, man, because I'd love to support you, you know, um, spread the word and get a T-shirt myself. So um, 
I'll definitely yeah. send you a t-shirt uh, as soon as I get them out. Just, uh, yeah, keep uh, keep an eye open. I'm a little slow at these things, but <laughs> maybe I need to delegate somebody to get me that stuff. <laughs> For sure, man. 